better start the stream yeah, soon yeah. because people are people want to watch. I just started it. I just started it. Okay. <laughs> I haven't. Don't you see? I haven't pressed the intro thing yet because I don't have the chat app. Oh, there we go. Chat app's open. Oh come on! Please connect. Thank you for connecting. I didn't even have to tell I'm, you to. I'm, you just did it. Yay. <laughs> I'm just saying no. there is someone in the chat room already saying there's no vid. It's up, I swear. Oh, wait. I should press the intro, shouldn't I? Might be a good idea. Well, you know, it just shows how Mickey Mouse this production is, so. Because <laughs> <laughs> rainbows won't shine unless you... Hey, 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 hey. Hey. It's my shtick. Okay. Kaboom! No, it's Kaboom! Hello, darkness, my old friend. Boom. I'd no, like to talk to you, like you again. Hello, Kaboom. darkness, my old friend. And if you miss, then you have to go splish. Anyway, welcome to the Pony Show. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Skynet. A Christmas miracle. It's because I'm not just a brony critic, I'm the brony critic. Yes, the brony critic. Because I review the brony fandom. I primarily review fan fictions, uh, fan content, and videos. So I, re I review all of you people. Uh, you guys can uh, follow me on YouTube. Uh, I also have a fan fiction account, but I don't really uh, have anything on it quite yet. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at the brony critic. Like twitter.com slash Lebroni Critic. Hey there, everybody. Show Joe here, and we're back. We're with another episode, and surprise, surprise, I actually liked this episode. I had a fun time watching this episode. And you can find me on the Twitter, a lot of times on Twitter. I spend a lot of time on there. YouTube, Twi I don't have a Twitch yet, but maybe sometime in the near future, I may get that set up so I can do streams and stuff. And Facebook, and I'm basically everywhere. Alrighty then. Hello, everybody. This is Master Code, your ace analyst here. And yes, we finally come to the Kieran episode, the one that swept the fandom, all the, all the various spoilers and whatnot. Fantastic episode. I absolutely love this one. And as per usual, you can find me on the Twitters and the YouTubes and just recently today, I released me and Finn's collab on Road to Friendship, so you should watch it. You should watch it. You should watch it. Anyway, take it away, Blizzy. Ah, uh, yes. I am Lightning Bliss, the Rainbow Alicorn. The Rainbow Alicorn, not the Karen. I am a Rainbow Alicorn. Get it right. That, that being said, yes, I did enjoy this episode a lot. I do have a few minor nitpicks about it that bug me a bit about it, but otherwise, I had so much fun, and I'm going to go on and on about how cute the Kirans are. And uh, you can find me on the YouTubes and the DeviantArts and the Twitters and my Facebook page, the Lightning Bliss Facebook page, and uh, yeah, you're up. Because rainbows won't light up the sky. <laughs> it is me, Insane Spyro, the greatest dragon in gaming, who thinks this is probably the best episode of the series. And yeah, you can find me here on the Twitch where I do video games for first impressions of new games and then 
what else ever I'm playing on that day, as well as YouTube where I do the first impressions, reviews, let's plays, and all of the other stuff up to golden. I guess we're introducing ourselves and giving our thoughts on the episodes. Okay. Well, um, some of you may know who I am, but if you don't, I'm Golden Fox, and I review MLP episodes and movies, and occasionally I stream Let's Plays. I have been in this fandom for arguably the longest time as a reviewer of MLP compared to a lot of other people. Not trying to be ego here, but just something a little extra to point out. Uh, for the episode, this stands as my favorite episode of the season and probably up there with my favorite episodes of the series like Hurricane Fluttershy, Pinky Pride, and Lesson Zero. While it's nice to get into no more world building, Autumn Blaze is a fun and hilarious character to have, and there's a reason why she became a wife food to a lot of fans. Her song is adorable and filled with so much joy, and story-wise, I appreciate the message about bottling up your emotions and why it's important to have some venting. By comparison, it does a much better job than All Bottled Up, since that episode's journey was just unpleasant. I've said before that emotions are a beauty that solidifies expressions without words, but can ultimately come at a heavy price. This also reminds me of how I need to handle my own emotions, as they are a challenge for everyone else. So it's more of a personal reason for me in loving this episode, but I still hold it in a high regard. Well, okay then. I thought we were just introducing ourselves. Hi, I'm Fiora. I'm the host of the channel. That's hey. They also gave their thoughts too. That's true. We did it. The some of them did, some of them didn't. We're gonna go back through that, and we're gonna unpack it. I swear, mostly. Don't hold me to that, please. I don't want to die. Um, hi, I'm Fiora. I blow stuff up. I do analysis of um, anime, 40K, My Little Pony, and video games. I do analysis from a scientific perspective. That means that, ooh, how is this made? Or, why is this person psychologically insane? I need to analyze this and figure it out. Uh, the most recent pony thing was looking at how ponies directly affect adult minds rather than children's. And why there's an analysis of why an adult fandom would spark up around a bunch of ponies. Uh, you can find all the links for me below the video window where I have YouTube, Fem Fiction, and my Discord. In the meantime, um, so this is an odd episode. Veroni Critic, I, I, I want to hear your initial thoughts and, and, and your feelings and... I am stealing myself because I know that you said this was an episode that you felt was made for you. Thank you. Well, uh, it, it's kind of personal because it's it does actually cover a subject that does actually... Uh, it, it hits a very personal point for me. Uh, I had and still have a, a really bad temper. And it's primarily because growing up, I learned really quickly that I had to, you know, learn how to bottle up my emotions. And so, you know, when I'm seeing, you know, how they're reacting and how they're talking about talking about this, uh, you know, talking about this particular issue, they handled it in a really mature way. I I really loved the the nuance that they were able to kind of give this subject a lot more than all bottled up all bottled up didn't really have as much nuance it tried to broach the same subject but i think they tried to make it a little bit more humorous this one felt a lot more emotional and i think i think i appreciate it a lot more for that uh because this is a subject that is very very <laughs> that is very you know difficult for most people to deal with especially you know especially for guys i think i mean i'm pre pretty sure there's a lot of guys here who have had this situation of you know don't you know for lack of a better term i'm thinking of the line from uh, frozen conceal don't feel you know so it's i i just i i know it's hard for me to actually like i sounds like i'm just I'm just like wandering around, but it's just because this episode means so much. And I appreciate the fact that they were able to tell a story like this at all. Uh, there are aspects I think, which are, you know, that maybe could have been done a little bit better. I think as far as like the timing, I do think that this episode went by really, really fast. And I think a lot of it was, you know, dominated by a single song, 
but I'm still as as far as the lesson itself, I I just I can't help but gush over how much good an episode like this could do for people. And you know, I appreciate them for that that I appreciate this episode for that. I I think that's about it for me. Okay. Uh Shoujo, step up to the plate. Let's see what you got to say. Okay, I'm going to try and say this without crying because I may have cried a little bit when I was watching this episode because just like the Brony Critic, this is kind of a real personal episode to me with a message that just struck me right in the feels because I don't know if I told you guys this, but I lost my friend a few years ago. He was my best friend and we got into a fight and I said some things that I regretted instantly after saying them and he basically cut me out of his life and... I regretted it so much that I sp spiraled down into a deep depression and I tried to, uh, let's see, the PG word would be offing myself because of that. And I guess seeing them, seeing the Kieran in this episode struggling with how to deal with their emotions and learning how to e express them without causing devastation in their wake just really hit me hard. On more lighter news, I just love Autumn Blaze as a character. She's so jumpy, bubbly, and so energetic. You just can't get help but get swept up in all of her emotions and everything she's trying to say. And she, she's probably one of my favorite characters and one of the reasons why I, I like this episode so much. She was a good part to, the, to this. And I think that's all I have to say. It was just a really personal episode. Hit me right in the feels. And... I have no real complaints about it. I really like this episode. I really did. Okie dokie. First off, I'm going to bring up something which I don't think anyone else is going to bring up. The weird, creepy conductor near the beginning. What was with that guy? He's like, ah, oh, these are these are the evil plays where where pony where any ponies are gone. There will be bad times. <laughs> I'm like, what is what is with this guy? I mean. I guess like when you live all alone in a little conductor's hut in the middle of nowhere, I guess you kind of, you know, get cabin fever, but that guy was just so crazy and weird. It was basically a big lipped alligator moment, that whole entire thing. So yeah, yeah I'm bringing that one back anyway. Um, I don't know where to start with next. Cause I, again, um, I, I think uh, Autumn Blaze, again, fantastic great character she's she's fun she's manic she's eccentric uh she's a great singer by the way i don't know who that singer or that voice actor is but she was absolutely amazing uh i love the song uh it didn't feel like it dragged it all it it was a great way to deliver exposition and didn't in a way that didn't feel like exposition so it had a great rhyme and flow to it um the uh i i also love the uh the dynamic it's it's kind of rare we see that but uh the the team routine aj and uh, fluttershy i think that's a great dynamic where you got two very di very different personalities where you got the kind of you know uh you got aj who's like pretty much like attack at things like head on and fluttershy who will be like avoiding conflict as all and you're sending them to it's it's like they're they're the perfect pet the perfect match to be sent to this place where um you know these kieran need to learn a lesson about understanding anger expressing their anger i love that i especially love the scene where um near the end where autumn on she comes in you know surrounding them with fire and um that that was actually cool i, I love the fire effects by the way the animation was absolutely beautiful i love i love the animation of near slight tangent but anyway back to where i was going uh i love the bit where uh autumn she was like oh, would you excuse me for a second and then she goes behind a bush and just splits out her anger ah! and whatnot i you know it's everyone has a different way of expressing their anger and uh something else to i think one of my capital my points at least for now is it kind of reminds me of if i may quote uh star wars jedi academy um force powers are neither good nor evil it's how you use them which is great here Anger, you know, it can be good or bad. It just depends on how you express it. So uh, let me see, look at my notes. And 
uh, overall, I think very, very fantastic, great flowing episode. One of the best of the season uh, and of the series. Okay, Lightning Bliss. Woof. I don't think I could top that. <laughs> um, yes to all that. Um, I think I want to go on about the Kieran's designs. Now, originally, when I first watched the episode, I, I can tell you right off the bat, I enjoyed it. But at the same time, uh, there was a moment in time where, yes, I thought the Kieran designs were cute, but I thought they were playing it too safe with their designs. Because uh, if I were to go and nitpick a little bit, the, the Kieran are an Asian style of unicorn, originated from, I believe, North Korea. Um, they kind of have a dragon-like look to them ever so slightly, a much longer snout, longer body, much hairier, and yet they have scales and a single horn. Um... You know, that sort of thing. I kind of have expected the Kirins to look a little bit more um, diverse in their looks. I thought they would have at least maybe a slightly longer torso, maybe a longer snout, maybe longer, thinner legs, probably look more like a deer than anything. Um, and that they were played a little safe by using pony, pony uh, puppets for it. But that being said, I still love their designs. I thought the manes were a nice touch and the scales were beautiful. I loved the little detail on their face going on. And if you look even more closely, which I have grown to love even more about the episode, is that they actually do de differentiate in character designs ever so slightly. Now, I want to point out males and females barely can tell them apart. The only way you can is by their eyes. If they don't have eyelashes, then they're male. <laughs> want to point that out. Um, but it's not just in the designs. If you look at each individual, you'll notice that there's a slight design in their manes or their tails or in the designs of their horns. Like one cure might have a singular stick for a horn. Another cure might have two points on its horn. Another cure might have a different pattern in its horn. It's those tiny little things that make me come back to rewatch the ep episode to see what I missed about their designs. So I absolutely do love the designs of the Kirins, even though they might have played a little bit safe at first. But then the more you look at them, the more you realize, oh, these guys really do have individual personality styles to them. It's really cool. Um, yeah. The, I guess my only complaint is I don't like the design of the leader. My screams too much Celestia. I, I kind of wish that they did go like with the original Kira look for the leader because then it wouldn't rip off Celestia so much. So eh, that, that would be my only complaint about their designs. But that's not even my major, my real major complaint. I want to, again, stress that this is one of my favorite episodes. So uh, yeah, I still have a complaint, but we'll get to that later. Insane, you're up. Courage. I've been naughty. <laughs> now, but he was, I felt like, beginning Creepy Pony was inspired by Courage the Cowardly Dog. Just out in the middle of nowhere, doing some weird, weird things. But in terms of the rest of the episode, it's probably my favourite of the series. Because, first of all, on the one side... Like, the side we watched, it's got all of just this nice, light-hearted thing with Autumn Blaze, as well as the deeper message of bottling up your anger. But on the other side, it's really damn creepy. Like, if you had, say, Stanley Kubrick or a proper horror person write that episode, like, you just go to this town where nobody speaks and they just stare at you. And then you're like, oh... And then you and your friend get separated, and they all just crowd in, staring at you. One of us. One of us. You could turn this into an actual horror thing. But yeah, in, in terms of like the good side, though, the light side, Autumn Blaze is fantastic. And in terms of bottling up your anger, I've never really had that issue, because I do YouTube, so if anything like in the AAA industry annoys me, I just go and shout my anger into the void and see if anybody will listen. So I guess I'm like her in a way, but they did a good job of 
keeping her somewhat serious as well as like just Dory from Finding Nemo kooky and a bit scatterbrained. So it, it was a good episode, Golden. Golden, you're muted. You're muted. Yeah, apparently, I, I'm way off today. Um, so I guess I had to repeat what I just said in the paragraph that I typed in. Whatever you wish. Well, um, it's really nothing new off of what everybody else said. This episode stands as my favorite of the season and probably right up there with Hurricane Fluttershy, Pinky Pride, and Lesson Zero as some of my favorites of the series. While it is nice to get to know more of the world building, Autumn Blaze is a fun and hilarious character to have. And there's a reason why she became a waifu for a lot of fans. <laughs> um, her song is adorable and filled with so much joy. It's silly, but that's what adds charm. Uh, Story-wise, I appreciate the message about bottling up your emotions, and it's why it's important to have some uh, venting every once in a while. Such as when she, when Autumn Blaze went behind that rock to sneeze out her anger. Um, I will admit that was pretty funny. By comparison, it does a much better job than all bottled up because in that episode, the whole journey was just unpleasant to watch. Um, I've said before that emotions are a beauty that solidifies expressions without words, but can ultimately come at a heavy price. I still stand by that, and this episode proves it. And to an extent, it does remind me of how I need to handle my emotions, such as how things were handled during season four when a lot of analysts were getting at each other's throats. Um, I think there's a few other people in uh, this uh, group who probably understands what I'm talking about. Um, so this is more of a personal reason for me loving this episode, but I still hold it into a high regard. I suppose that uh, that makes it my turn, doesn't it? Yeah, my bad. No, it's okay. It's not your bad. I'm just looking up and realizing I'm deer in the headlights at the moment. Um... This is not actually my favorite episode of the season. I'm I'm still a really hung up on on Heartswarming Club because that that one just made me cry and curl up in a ball and go, "Okay, this is this is going to be a day." Um and also the reason why I really like Gallus as a character now. Um but the I have to say the song is one of the reasons why I actually started enjoying the series in the first place back in season one, because I, as much as I hate Pinkie Pie, I actually like Smile, Smile, Smile. And so it it's really a nice throwback to the kind of quality of music that we expect from the series. Um, I can appreciate that, and... I kind of enjoy the fact that I think it's the longest song in the entire series because it takes up a good four minutes of the episode. But I... I think that this is correct, and this this episode did remind me of a, of a much younger version of myself before I could drink where I did have anger problems. There's an apartment that has two holes in the wall that I had to move out of, but... I ended up not getting the deposit back for obvious reasons. Um, so, I'm okay with that. That is reminding me of where I had been at one point in my life and then come forward, and now I can see why we as a community might have needed this episode to remind us we come together to watch a children's show at 8 o'clock on Saturday like we're 9, but... We also get at each other's throats. I think the biggest argument you can ever start is by coming out and saying blank is best pony and then just watching the fireworks go off. Um, and now we're being reminded that perhaps screaming and yelling at each other and trying to prove a point that is an opinion is not necessarily the best way for our community itself, much less for going through life. And that's what I have to say on it. So, uh, who wants to bring up a specific, because I can't say that word, um, 
theme or topic or something they want to discuss intimately about the episode. I see Lightning Bliss. Anybody else before I throw it to Blissey? Uh, so I'll Burning Critic light up. Okay, so Blissey get us started, then sh Burning Critic and Shoujo. Okay, so the, the nitpick I have with this episode, or this problem I have with it. Um, so the Kieran's problem is that they got angry with each other. Words were expressed of anger and hate, and well, they turn into the Eryx and they set their village on fire as a result. And emotions, they said basically that emotions were bad and words were a curse. So they took a vow of silence and went into the, the river of silence, which is obviously a magical river that mutes them. I have a problem with this because clearly later on, the characters, the Kirans that have remained silent are expressing emotions you don't need to use words to express emotions you could do so through body language and facial expressions which they clearly still had there go i felt like mm, this episode could have been tweaked on the writing in that regard maybe how about just repress your voice repress words keep things to yourself that might have been interpreted better instead of um just uh saying that, oh, we're suppressing both your words and emotions. Well, if they're suppressing emotions and words, well, they wouldn't feel anything. We wouldn't see expressions, period. We wouldn't see looks of shock, dismay, sadness, embarrassment, confusion. We saw all that throughout most of the Kirans that were silent. So I thought that could have been tweaked a little bit. I think I actually worked that out. I don't think it was all emotions i think it was just the ability to turn fiery because after they walked into the river they came out normal so it wasn't all emotions that were suppressed it was just that they wouldn't be able to go fire form anymore i think that might also have kind of been the point as well of the story is they they were mistaken the the kirans were mistaken they believed that by suppressing suppressing the ability to express their emotions that they were somehow getting rid of them but that's not what they were doing at all they were simply losing the ability to communicate entirely they were engaging in unhealthy behavior you know and in fact for a lot of people that's actually how a lot of anger issues start up I know for me, there were a lot of situations of, you know, for a long time growing up, I was bullied. And so whenever I would lose my temper, the reactions people would give is, well, just don't let them see you get upset. Don't show it. Don't show it. Don't say anything. The more you make a deal about it, the more they're going to mess with you. And so instead of learning how to properly express my frustrations, my anger, my disappointments, I learned to basically say nothing at all and bottled up until it until what my family coined as meltdowns. So, you know, it's seeing this situation, it's kind of the it's a physical manifestation, a narrative manifestation of that misconception. We live especially in our society which is very much it very much oriented around the emotions are weakness, don't express it. And so they were kind of doing the, sim the physical manifestation of that idea. So I think the fact that it's a plot hole is actually kind of supposed to be the point. You know? Mm. You go first. For the love of gosh, Brody, you stole my idea. And the point that I wanted to bring up. Well, I I don't think it's that complicated, or it shouldn't be that complicated for a kid's show, but I guess it gets us adults talking. I think, um, actually, Bliss, I think that the the fact that most of the Kieran know they were like in their neutral expressions, that uh, I think that actually worked realistically because we've never the the song never established like exactly how long ago they took that vow of silence. I mean, I know it wasn't like that was hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, they're still relatively the same age, but they're still, you know, maybe like a year or so. And when your entire society, which is in, which is closed off 
in the middle of nowhere, your society, your society tends to like adapt. So that like, um, you know, Hey, I'm going to walk up to this neutral person. Huh? He's acting all neutral. Hmm, maybe I should be more neutral too. Like everyone else. Otherwise I'll look different or something like that. I, I think it felt more realistic because they, they never, they, it's been so long since they've been exposed to some pony else who has actually expressed some emotions, you know, facially or whatever that maybe they even kind of, you know, forgotten like like huh hmm, it's been so long uh sadness what does sadness look like or uh what does what does anger look like or you know so long li lines of that mm. yet they were still able to do that in the episodes regardless so uh, my point is is that they say the river silence was supposed to remove emotions and words it didn't do one of those things that's my point well the, the exact line says the water cooled emotions it didn't say it got rid of ah i must have missed that point yeah it says the water cooled emotions and peace was soon restored but with no way to speak my mind and blah 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 yeah but yeah that's and I mean, the only way that kind of worked is because the Kirins equated speaking with losing control of emotions. They basically, instead of learning how to express themselves properly, express their anger health in a healthy manner, they answered it in an unhealthy manner, which was kind of it, the whole point of the, the cooling effect is a manifestation of them getting the wrong idea about how to deal with this issue. Oh, and it's something it, something else I just thought of real quick was a uh, thing. Let's think of it this way: um, in the Kieran village, what if you're you're a Kieran, you're a vendor, and then some other Kieran just walks right up to you and does a big old grin, like a big old happy smile, and just stares at you. You're like, uh, "Yes, uh, what about, did do you want something?" And yeah, you, know, you know, again, it go I, again. I, I feel that it, it it goes back to the whole closed condensed society i i completely buy that it's like okay the, uh, i smiled very weird today maybe i should not be doing that you know something like that i know i'm digging a hole but yeah there we go again it comes back to the point of give it to somebody they could make it into a horror episode he's just standing there smiling at me potentially <laughs> menacingly or, you know, a story about a whole bunch of people who can't speak, you know, like a quiet place. Stories like a quiet place or the f one thing that kind of bothers me is they never had sign language. They never came up with some other mean like because people had to know how to communicate with each other because clearly things got fixed or the town was maintained and rebuilt after the fact. But. Everybody here knows how hard it is to talk, how hard it is to, you know, to not speak to people or to not communicate with someone to get any kind of work done. Right. I mean, but how would, just very quickly, how would you sign with hooves? <laughs> I, I figured the they used writing. At the end. I like at the end when um, the brown one wanted the cure, she was like waving her hooves and touching Autumn Blaze's mouth. I. I just want to point out that Lightning Bliss has apparently opened a can of worms here. <laughs> Sorry! Uh, but yeah, uh, I... We as humans can, can use sign language, um, and apes can use sign language, but the point is that uh, they are right... I, for us to imagine using hooves as sign language would probably be difficult, but then I'm reminded that there's entire signs in sign language. Hi, I'm fluent in this. I actually do a full panel did a full panel on it at cider fest um there's a there's entire signs that we use where the fist is closed but because of the motion and the air drawing that you're doing you're expressing yourself and you're forming a word i imagine very easily that they could use their hooves in the similar manner just they wouldn't have the dexterity that we have with our fingers to do the same uh, thing so I don't see why they wouldn't have developed sign a form of sign language because I do so many different signals and words 
with sign language and I never use my fingers. And the irony of that situation is that if they have developed a sign language, it completely upends the entire point they were trying to make because you can express emotions in sign language just as easily as you can in any other, you know, in any other language. So if you're going to, you know, put in hurtful words, you know, you can do it in sign language just as easily. So all they've managed to do is remove their voice. Well, I guess this is why Masako kind of helped correct me that the river cooled their emotions. Otherwise, if words triggered their, rain, their, their rage in the first place, but now they've taken the vow of silence in the stream, so now even if they were to get angry, they probably wouldn't get angry at all because that emotion has been repressed. And even with written word expressing anger, they probably wouldn't feel it anyway. So how would they express it? Oh, that's creepy when I think about it, that their rage was taken or dampened so badly. They oh. all had perpetual mod face. It's kind of like Doctor Who, but just in reverse, whereas like a Dalek has had its rage and anger amplified to be the ultimate killer machine. They've just had their rage repressed. Oh my god, no, they've had partial lobotomies. You guys are talking about the Cybermen. It cools all their emotions. That means it's well, not just about it, rage, love, and passion, and and happiness. Since when Sadness, did a river they're be mute. Since when did a river suddenly become a huge horror story element? This is... That's horrific! <laughs> It's anyway. terrifying. It kind of reminds yeah. me of that one book called The Giver where everything, where it wasn't until, well, spoiler alert for the book, it wasn't revealed towards the end of the book that everything was all mute and stuff and they couldn't feel any emotions. And they had this one person in the community that bolstered all of those, all of these things that we take for granted right now. And it kind of just reminds me of that. Yeah, the gi the giver. I re I remember that because yeah, as we watching I read this the episode, book. I was thinking, I was thinking like, wait a minute, there there was a book I've read it before where there, everyone was like silent and they had to communicate through some weird means, and that was it. Thank you for reminding. Me. I remember it because I had to look, read it in elementary and secondary school. I feel like I should write this this evening and just write like the horror show of living as a Kirin where you remember what it was like to feel love and passion and and happiness and joy and all these wonderful good emotions and now they're just kind of meh go for it i have no voice yes. and i must scream but well, here's a question though if it's been like repressed so that you can't feel it how would you remember what it felt like because if you remember what it felt like, then you'd still be able to feel it. No, 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 no. Um, so uh, this has been this has been well documented in psychological patients for decades. Uh, even post lobotomy, if they still have any form of sentient thought, uh, they still remember what it was like, and it's one of the most passionate things that they can possibly write about now because they remember what it was like to feel the extremes of happy emotions and they can't express or feel them anymore and it physically cause and since they can't feel it emotionally in their head anymore it causes them physical pain this has been documented for like 60 70 years now this kind of stuff is like step for wives level horrifying um, and it's the same thing with, uh, like, it's, uh, it's the emotional equivalent of a, uh, of a, of a trained marksman losing his trigger finger. It is literally the, or it's the emotional equivalent of a, um, of some, of someone who's an excellent singer ripping one of their vocal cords. It is completely emotionally devastating. And there's no way to overcome it, and you physically cannot move past it. Well, 
it's uh, it's time to go visit evil princess U Luna in the mirror universe to to see the horror version of this episode. I mean, the closest thing I could come to that very aspect that Bior just talked about is like, ironically, Christmas. When you were a kid, or at least for me anyway, I remember, I remember the feeling of being awake on Christmas Eve. I'm six, seven years old. I'm in bed. I'm all giggly and scared and excited at the same time because I am listening for a heavy thud on the roof and clippity clop of uh, deer hooves because I'm thinking, Santa's coming, Santa's coming, Santa's coming. He's or it could be Ty and Daga. Shut up. <laughs> um, I remember that feeling of excitement and fear because I was thinking I'm going to stay up this year. I'm going to see him this time. I guarantee it. And then I fall asleep. And then I wake up the next morning and, you know, I'm all super excited for presents. I'm older now, much, much, much older now. I don't obviously get that feeling anymore. I, I go to bed on Christmas Eve like I normally would go to bed. I wake up and I mean, yeah, I'm a little excited. Like, oh, I'm with family and friends. We're going to open presents. Yeah, it's all good. It, it's not the same. I, I miss that feeling of magic and wonder that I used to have as a child for this holiday. And I maybe one day I'll get it through other means. Because I know I have. I know I got that sense of wonder and excitement before through other means. But... It, it won't ever be the same on a holiday aspect for me. I'm a killjoy. You're almost talking like Santa's not real. Santa's not real? <laughs> oh, no! Spoilers! <laughs> <laughs> Now that we've had utter existential horror, hey, Brony Critic, it's your turn! <laughs> critic! You there, Critic? Critic, you there? You had a point. He's dead. He's dead, Jim. Oh no, he's gone mute just like the Kieran! Uh oh. He has critic. been silenced. He's taking the vow of silence. Critic down! Shoujo, save us! Quick, I don't have the flower. I don't have the mixture to save him. I meant. Hi. Your point. Bring it up. Let's go. I'll figure out how to save Verdict Critic later. I think I forgot it. I don't know what it was. I got caught up with everyone else's what they were saying and everything else, and I just can't remember it for the life of me. I'm sorry. Well, this escalated quickly. Anyone else got a point they want to bring up that I missed? You know, I, I will say one last thing. Again, going back to the whole emotions thing where, yeah, I, I guess you could use sign language, but uh, I was thinking, like, how, how do the Kieran, like, pay for stuff if, if, they, if they even use bits at all? So it's like they could just, um, Kieran walks up to the sign, she'll, like, point to some fruits or something, and then uh, the other Kieran, the vendor, will be like, will, like, point at the sign and be like, the price, or... If, if, if there's a sign, they could be like, that'd be three bits, you know, something like that. So, <laughs> okay, that's my last bit on that. I'm, I'm dropping that topic. Okay. Anybody got a theme or, or a direct subject they want to bring up for this episode? Good or bad, your choice. Okay. Uh, I think Bernie yeah. Critic lost his internet I connection. Yeah, I so, think we kind of, kind of like combined, kind of combined our earlier discussion with, uh, you know, anger and expression and whatnot, and we kind of went more like cure in psychology. I think we kind of accidentally kind of like combined themes in both sections. So, uh, I, 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 I have to think about it, but I, I don't think I think we covered everything for themes. So now we bring up the 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 more interesting part of this for us. Um, what is something about this episode that you would change and why to make it better? Uh, 
Right, I see Shoujo, Lightning Bliss, Master Code in that order. Welcome to the army of your... Okay, it's a simple thing, and I believe Blissy already talked about it when she was talking about some of the stuff that she was talking about, is that I really wish that they didn't go with the pony Yay. aesthetic for the Kieran bases and they made them more mystical-like and almost akin to what they are in our world. I know they're not real in our world, but the way that they're designed in our world. I wish there was a little bit more difference in the design of the of their uh, design, other than just going for a basic pony, dragon, Kieran hybrid. But other than that, I would have just changed the design to make them look different than the ponies. Do you have a specific way you would have changed their designs? Just maybe make them look well. I would have, I would have liked to see them maybe look a little dragon like because the Kieran's that I've seen have looked like dragons and have some dragon aesthetic to them. So if they looked a little bit more like dragons and they had maybe longer bodies or something different than the pony aesthetic, then that's the way I would lose change it. I think that comes down to, like, what Lightning Bliss said about the extra details. You either have this fantastical design with long bodies and snouts, or you have, like, that one's got a little extra thing on his horn, or that one's got the magic spiraling in a different way. Do you want each one to be a basic pony base but have unique features? Or do you want these new bases but they're all going to look the same because of time constraints? And there's a whole other issue you got, uh, that has... He's to back! We saved him! He's back! He's not mute! Yeah, I'm sorry. My uh, internet dropped off for a second. It does that sometimes. at and Silence is over. at and t um, so another thing you have to consider about the designs of the Kirins is that you also have to make the designs of the Nerex. Like, not only is it one being, it's actually two, and you have to make them, like, it has to be a design that looks good in two different ways, and that's really hard to do. It's, it's sort of the, it's the reason why the Equestria Girls doll, or why the Equestria Girls designs were so off-putting at the beginning. It's because the characters' designs and colors were designed to look good as ponies, and adapting that into a human design looked a little off. It looked a little strange. So trying to design the Kirins, and then you're having to worry about, oh, uh, but we also have to make the Nerex look very much like these are clearly just Kirins, but modified slightly. And doing that is not only time-consuming, but could really could turn into a misstep and for the message to hit home the nerex and the kirins do kind of still have to look good i know i know this is just a major i repeat a major nitpick i like the designs otherwise but if i had a chance to change them that's how i would change them it's a major nitpick so uh i saw blissey's hand next welcome son okay um, so everybody's basically nitpicking what I already nitpicked, so I'm just gonna say, um, I wish Fluttershy had a better role than just kind of being a plot device for, oh, she just happens to be able to talk to animals, and the animals know what's going on, the animals had the key to fixing the problem the Kieran's had, yada yada yada, I just felt like she was more plot device than an actual part of the problem solving, uh, and I tend to hate plot devices, uh, but that's me. Um, I felt like her personality and being kind and soft and gentle, being able to show her ways of communicating without anger could have benefited the Kieran's, or she could express, yes, I do get angry, but I'm one, I'm probably, well, not to toot her own horn, but she's the element of kindness, and if, if the element of kindness is able to communicate her fears, angers, and problems to her friend Applejack, then why not the Kirits? I, I figured, I thought her personality could have helped to benefit that, hey, I am living proof that 
I am a kind pony, but even I can get angry and I know how to control it. You can too. I, uh, I, you go for Thank you, Master Code. Um, I, I really kind of feel like um, this has been a repeated problem with Fluttershy. It's like writers don't know how to use her properly. Um, we keep getting either the same episode or we get um, just some where Fluttershy is background. I mean, the entire movie, and I, and I mean this in the worst way possible, and we'll probably go over the movie at some point. Um, the entire, actually, we are going over the movie. That's on the schedule. Um, the entire movie, Fluttershy was a background pony for the most part. Thank you. I I made a whole I made a I made a whole panel about that actually. Panel about what? <laughs> um uh the problems of the movie and how I would fix them. Uh building a better movie. I'm working on a video of the uh, recording of it, but uh self promotion. Uh, anyway, I actually uh, I very much agree with you guys about uh Fluttershy. Like ironically enough, this was an Applejack episode. This was wholly and totally an Applejack episode with Fluttershy kind of around for the ride. And it it's a little disappointing that they didn't have enough confidence in Applejack as a character to just kind of let her be her own thing, let her do her own thing. Because you didn't need to have, you know, I guess they need to have two people. They've kind of established you need two people in any particular group. Oh, wait, no, actually they haven't. Because Starlight, Starlight did a friendship problem all on her own in that one episode with a Daybreaker. So they honestly could have just had Applejack in the episode. You know, but Applejack almost never gets episodes by herself anymore. Uh, I don't know if I'm not, if I'm the only one who's kind of noticed that she always ends up having to play. She has to play Dutragonist to another character. And I guess they chose with Fluttershy this time, but ironically enough, Fluttershy is kind of playing the deus ex machina. I, okay, I've been thinking about what you guys have been saying, and actually, uh, barring her from being a plot device, she is actually necessary to the episode. Let's take a look at this episode from the perspective of just sending Applejack. Okay, so she'll, she'll go on the adventure, she goes and leaves to know the the dangerous cliffs and whatnot she goes to the swamp and basically takes forever but okay let's say she does finally get to the kieran village and you know we go through the motions of she meets on a blaze and then she's like aha that's the solution i need to show them that they need to talk again that's where fluttershy is necessary because without that argument uh that uh aj and fluttershy initially have when they first get back together that's that's the inciting incident for the Karen to be like, huh? Oh, oh, they're they're arguing. Oh, oh, but wait a minute, they're not turning into fiery demons. They're not they're not killing each other like like we used to do, huh? You know, uh, we're, we're we're gonna stay neutral, but uh, we'll, we'll 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 keep an eye on this. And I, I I think that they're they're both necessary to the plot, and that they that they actually work very well and work flourish perfectly into this. Not only that. Could you imagine if it was Applejack that had to talk to the Kieran and explain, considering her first interaction of them, of, I can't understand you. Go back to your country. Exactly. Without Fluttershy, uh, Applejack had nothing to work on. She would have been like, uh, uh, okay, I got to get him to talk. Uh, 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 how do I show them that uh, arguing and is it's okay if she would have lost and, her temper yeah exactly she she would have lost her temper <laughs> right but aj is you know she's one of the more volatile of the main six when she tends to lose her anger so they're like oh no she's turning into an evil creature run 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 so again i i think again fluttershy is really necessary for her to work off of i'm not 
I'm not saying that Fluttershy was useless. I'm saying she was mostly used as a plot device and not as an actual the word um she didn't use her strengths other than oh she could talk to animals i, I felt I th she, she could have i felt like she could have had more i felt like she could have done much more i i think i know what lightning is getting at is she didn't have an arc she didn't learn anything Applejack learned something. She actually learned something kind of at the beginning of the story. And it, it seems more like she was along for the ride. She didn't grow as much as the other characters did, which kind of puts her as sort of the odd pony out. I think it's because she's already got the growth that she needs. Like th with things like Hurricane Fluttershy there has been a lot of good Fluttershy episodes. But Applejack, you know, there's a, there's a lot of Flim Flam episodes. Like, Dear Princess Celestia, today I didn't learn anything. She's, she's kind of like, as many people have said, the background pony. So I think the reason why Fluttershy is there is just to kind of help play off Applejack to give her the good episodes that Applejack really deserves and needs because some of Applejack episodes are very lacking. And then uh, I'll say one more thing also. Uh, you know, let's look at it from the opposite perspective. Let's just say the map just sent Fluttershy. Okay, she she goes there. She, you know, she's probably intimidated first by the evil creepy conductor dude or whatever. But anyway, she eventually finds out you know, about where the Kieran are from the animal is fine. And again, we go through the same motions. You know, it's like, hey, is there a Kieran that can talk? Meet on Blaze and blah, blah, blah. And like, it's like, oh, and she could maybe be like, okay, maybe the cure is to get them to talk or healthy expression of anger. But again, where do you go from there? She has no one else to work off of. She needs someone else to work off something and a, an opposite or what's the word? Not antagonistic, but that's the only one I can think of. A rivaling personality traits, you know, something that can say, you know, that's why you got uh, Fluttershy's kindness versus AJ's uh, bluntness with everything. So, again, one cannot work without the other. They needed both in the episode. They were both necessary. And I hear what you're saying, but you're missing my point. I'm saying I wish... It, uh... Fluttershy's strengths could have been used more than just her being a plot device and talking to animals, because that's all she And while, yes, that helped, it was still a plot device. Next. Well, why don't we give Moon Knight a chance, because he's just come in, or are you still out and about, Moon? He took a vow of silence. Uh... Uh, yes, sorry, sorry. I was just asking if I could join because. Uh... You were perfectly fine, sir. You were part of this cast. You were more than welcome to join at any time. You were also more than welcome to say I have to go at any time or to be late. Either any of these things are fine. So, we just asked you, have you seen the episode? Because you weren't here for the viewing, and have you? How would you improve it? Uh, yeah, I've seen the episode, uh, well, since it, it, it leaked, it came out, uh, later in the USA. Uh, how will I improve it? I guess it's, it, it's like a, a little bit, uh, like the, epi the episode itself is good, but I think that, uh, it, it was supposed to be like an Applejack and Flourish High episode, but let's be honest, it feels more like a autumn blaze episode which is totally fine by me but but i i guess that i i understand what please said uh j just a couple of minutes ago that like oh florisha is just uh she talks to animals next uh applejack is just oh uh, let's get here through the most complicated path next it's like I, I guess they could have used them a little bit better or or just not use them at all if they were just like a little bit of plot devices but uh, I guess it's the only like complaint I have. 
uh, against the episode because aside from that, I think the episode is really good. It has uh, great music. It it has an an amazing character, and well, a new species that uh, it, it was in the fandom, but it wasn't really confirmed by Hasbro to be official. Is this time for Q and A? Uh, unless somebody else has a way they want to improve the episode, I believe the answer to that question is yes. Yes, it is. So does anybody else have a way they want to improve the episode? I guess the only extra way is you could have removed the squirrel. Because, like, when the end, when they were saying, how can we find it? And all Applejack knew was it was a blue flower... She obviously stood on it at the beginning of the episode and she could have said, wait a minute, blue flower. I, I stood on one of those down the mountain and you could have like had more of a, a quest to find it rather than the squirrel directly telling you where it was. Like you could have removed the squirrel. Or it's like, um, I, 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 or even, I guess you could just throw in this scenario if, uh, what if, what if uh, for some reason they had like, Flourish I was like, ooh, these are pretty flowers. You know, there's a couple extra ones. I'll just take them with me or something like that. <laughs> that, we, that would be another way, but uh, I think it could be a little bit ex machina since, oh, conveniently, the flowers that Flourish I picked up were the ones that were the cure. Hmm. Like after we know the flowers are the cure, it's it, it's like a little it, it's like a little obvious, but uh, yeah, before that it kind of sounds like an ex machina. Q and A. All right, Q and A it is. Um, so we have the first question here it is actually from. A uh, little Ronak, who's provided us with quite a few. Um, the first question is, do you think the Kieran leader is a possible cousin to the royal sisters Luna and Tia because of their designs? Maybe? We don't really know much about their physiology. Like, we don't know if they live for hundreds of years or if they live, like, normal pony lives. If, if there was something like, oh, the... The, the queen has lived for there's been a supposed queen that lived for thousands of years and whatnot you know maybe then I could see it but because we don't really know their physiology other than they turn into fiery flame demons when they're angry you really it's really up in the air I mean it could be because uh, if you remember uh, Rock Hoof I think it's the one that gives them the uh, shield where you see the Kirin and the Nerix but then again, Tasbro tends to reuse like most of, if not all of their assets, so I don't have any idea. It could be, but then again, it could be just them using the same asset from Celestia and, well, you know, Kirinize it, like we've seen some of C's uh, have done it uh, after the episode released. I think it's just a coincidence that she and Celestia look the same. They probably were trying to go for a familiar air to it, so they made the leader similar to Celestia just for maybe a similar sake. I think they were just saving time because they didn't have time to come up with new designs and new puppets, so they went with what they had, altered a few things, and voila. Ding, ding, ding. Goldie, you there? What? Did you fall asleep? No, there's just uh, there's a conversation going on in the room. Next question. see here i have a question from drinking buddy how long do you think the kieran have been isolated in their part of the world and what do you think triggered the map sending applejack and fluttershy to them well 
well, clearly they might have been isolated for a long time because we never heard about them, but that wasn't a problem for their civilization. However, we don't know how they age. We don't know anything about their uh, physical aspects or their magical aspects. Um, so I can only go on assumption that they age like ponies right now. That being said, clearly their anger issues and silent issues probably happened many years ago because according to them, they burnt their village down. They obviously had to rebuild. Peace was restored. That might have taken them a few years. So I'm going to assume probably it happened within six, between five, six years that they took a vow of silence. And maybe the map just finally picked up on it. I uh, mean, it's just up to a random guess at this point, because we there's a lot of things that we don't know about the key, and like Bliss said, I would have to assume maybe... My guess would have to be... Uh, don't know, maybe the map just thought of it, because we know the map is set yet now. I think I can I can pull a string of logic because they got silence, which could have been a few years ago because they obviously had to rebuild. And in Autumn Blaze's song, she says that she's had the voices. She's been trapped inside her head for a couple of years or at least a year. And then she found the cure and started talking. So when they were all silenced, there was no problem. The, the balance was maintained and nobody was causing trouble. But now that you've got one single Karen that is talking, it's threatening to upset that balance. And the map's like, ah, that's there you go. That's a problem. She's talking now, so we got to deal with it. Yeah, like, like I said earlier, it's hard to, because we don't know much about Kieran physiology other than they turn into flaming demons. You know, we don't know how, how long they age, but the, you did bring up a good point I didn't think about was, uh, the, the transition or how long the Kieran had been in this vow of silence because you, you figure you know they probably maybe like ransacked or burned down their entire village in a month and you know uh, a lot of any look some of the foliage I think was burned also so you take about eh, maybe like a year from there at least you know let, let's let's be fair let's say a minimum year it took them for them to do the whole vow of silence to flourish on aging and the whole map occurring them so uh Again, not really much to go on, but there you go. And then it kind of just dawned to me, oh, wait, they have magic too. So it probably took them half the... It would take probably much less time for them to rebuild, unlike us humans. So let's say this entire apartment complex that I live in is the size of their village. And this entire apartment burned down, heaven forbid. How long do you think it would take us to rebuild this place? That's that's what I was about to say. Like a tree, it doesn't like grow up in a year. It takes like uh, at least I think it's like twenty or thirty years or, so, or more, depending on what tree it is. Aha! Uh-huh. But so... see, I have a counter to this. They can make things grow. I saw this happening with one of the Kirans. They were making some plants grow. Aha! Uh-huh. Aha! Uh-huh. I think we. I think, I think we pretty much hit the point on this question, so next question! Okay. Um, do you wish to see any young Kirans in the Friendship School in Season 9? And if so, what would you want them to be uh, included as? Or, like, what would you want their arc in the show to be? This one is from Magical Starfish and Myth Pony. Uh, it will be interesting because, well... We've talked about wanting a lot, a lot of other creatures in. Uh, I mean, I think they cover the basics: uh, the griffons, the hippogriffs, uh, the uh, skill changelings, uh, the yaks, and the dragons. But I guess if there's like other creatures that can also become friendly and for and well, the Kirin, uh well, they were secluded and now they would be like discovering all this new world and that friendship is spreading and the dragons aren't bad because. Well, they're, they're half dragons, but like maybe they fear the other creatures and stuff. As for the arc, it would be uh, kind of uncertain to say. Like, like the most basic idea that I could, can come up with right now is that they will discover all the new things that the ponies have evolved into, like all the magic, all the research, uh, 
the research on friendship, the tree of harmony. But aside from that, uh, it falls into like the same kind of lessons that maybe the students have learned. Uh, and, and I wouldn't like that to repeat over and over again because they've already reused a ton of uh, lessons on this season. Uh, but uh, I don't know if anyone else has a better idea of what the Kevins could do. Well, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to the idea of having a Kieran at the school, but as far as an arc goes, I think that's a really, that's the wrong way to think about it is the idea of, oh, because this character belongs to a certain race or a different species, then it's going to have a predominant arc to it. I, I don't really like the planet of hats mentality to like all dragons are all dragons are greedy and therefore all of their storylines have to deal with it or all griffins are selfish and therefore we always have to learn about i want if there's going to be an arc i want it to be a character specific one and i think that ultimately will come down to whatever the personal history backstory of the that kieran is i mean it'd be interesting to see what their perspective is on the silence and how that affects them but I think it's kind of a wrong idea to think of, oh, because they're a cure and they have to have this specific arc going through as their character. You mean like, for example, if a Kirin was uh, silent all the time because of the bow and now he doesn't know how to express himself or something and he has to be like all cheery and, uh, well, happy like the other Kirins and so, sort of something like that? Yeah, something that could... Hell... Sorry. No, you go ahead. I have already had my chance. Okay. Um, something tells me that both that one Kieran and Silverstream would get along way too. Uh, Autumn Blaze? Or... Oh, no. no it... I know what he's talking about. <laughs> Did we change the subject? No, 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 no. I said I, I know what you're talking about now. Oh. Okay. You, you basically were saying that Silverstream and if this cure, if that one Kieran were to have like always a giggly, happy emotions because that's all she can, she knows how to do. Pretty much, she'd be yeah. getting getting along too well with the hippogriff. <laughs> this brings us back to the uh, to the stairs joke. Stairs. God, I love stairs. I suppose if there was going to be a Karen. You could have, if it, there was going to be an arc, you could have it as a a facade arc because they've been silenced and repressed for so long. you got to go to this school of happiness and friendship and you can't express that, but you're going to try. You're going to put on your fake smile and do your fake laugh, but inside it's, it's not real. That would be a fantastic idea for a story, like a way, a story of someone who doesn't feel happy all the time. You know, the, what they sometimes have Pinkie Pie pretend to be in fan fiction, but because it's Pinkie Pie and they're not going to, you know, they're not going to have one of their big money makers be depressive, actually use this character as I don't always feel happy, but I feel obligated to pretend to be happy because we were you know, cooled down for so long or even using it for their temper, you know, learning how to relearn how to feel things. I think that could be a really interesting, uh, a really interesting arc. And it plays a little bit into the race idea, which is, I think, where the question was coming from and would be very unique to their character. Yeah, kind of going off what you guys were just saying, like, you know, I, I imagine like uh, there's there's a killer, yeah, there's a cure Philly that walks in and she kind of at at first it kind of goes like the oh it's a stereotypical I won't say bully route but like the kind of like moody the kind of like the moody route if you get my drift like she's always gonna like in her initial episode she would always be like uh, catching on fire like for almost every situation or she's like get out of my way and she turned to a fire or it's like you got my food burned or something like that she turned to near and you know, eventually, you know, the student six, you know, um, they get into a situation where they're they're together and it's like, why, why are you so angry all the time? And, you know, it reveals some type of emotional story, however they want to go with it. And in the end, they become friends. So, yeah, I'd, I'd be totally down for that. If you're listening to this Hasbro and you get some ideas, we want royalties. Trademark. 
You could go. Uh, you could even go. You're wrong. all terrible people. I'm going to now go to the next question. I was going to say, you could even go one deeper with some kind of drug abuse. Like, if she's getting this facade where she's smiling, and then she starts getting angry, there's a diluted version of the stream where she just has to, to cool herself down. It's like, why have you got to keep uh, cooling yourself down? Uh, are we happy if you... No, uh, Astro will never go that route, right? Absolutely. I mean, they I went with the route, so... I mean, they went with the route of uh, Tree Hogger, and then we have the same sex couples, and I don't know why they don't admit it, but basically they are, and I don't There's... know why they, and the melting faces, and uh, someone being shattered to pieces. Subtext yeah, versus it's, it's context. Like it's, it's like... Okay, I'm going to move us to the next question here. Having seen a a Royal Problems Daybreaker, as well as knowing about Nightmare Moon, is there an aspect of duality where we see the Kirans with turning into fire and flaming mane? Is there an aspect of duality that stretches throughout all heavily magical creatures? Come again? I... Are you saying like what? there's like an evil version of like Griffin there's an evil version of everything magical in this world, and there's a good version of everything magical in this world? Do you think? that because of that, that they might all stem from the same creature or they might be interrelated somehow, or directly speaking, would the actual direct question is, do you think Celestia and Luna might be part Kirin or the Kirin might be off of their own family line? I strongly believe that everything in Equestria has some magical tap-in, whether you're Earthhorn, Unicorn, Alicorn, Kirin... Manicore, uh, Kieran, Hippogriff, yada, yada, yada. Uh, just about every creature we have met has some magical capability. There go, yeah. I think they all do have the capacity to have different personalities that can vastly alter. I'm going to shut up now before Thunderblight comes out. <laughs> No, it's okay, it's okay. I think uh, it's uh, interesting because, yeah, we've seen Daybreaker with uh, Celestia. Uh, Nightmare Moon with uh, Luna, Nightmare Twilight, or Midnight Sparkle, whatever she was called, which was, bas was basically the opposite side of uh, Twilight. And I guess there's always an opposite to like uh, every creature, if they're because well, they all have magic, like please said in one way or another. And there's also the other uh, the, the comic where they go through the mirror, and it's like the opposite. Like every the the goods are bad, the bads are good. But yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's a little bit uh, yeah, it's uh, everything good always has to have its bad side to like kind of balance the universe and sort of that stuff. Well, and this is actually a very common uh, pattern in mythology. It's kind of the, this notion of duality is very very common, and if we can go a little bit into sort of the metaphysics of it a bit, I'm not going to go too far into it. Go but, nuts. you know, <laughs> there, you know, we notice that there's kind of that there's that definition of what darkness is, as being simply the absence of light. And therefore, the definition, if no light existed, there couldn't be darkness. So it's kind of this idea that in everything, it is the presence of something which therefore implies the presence of its opposite. And this is sort of just a natural, logical reaction to the way our world works. You know, and so, especially in a show that's very much about harmony and balance, you know, even magic kind of has this notion, you know, you have dark magic and harmonic magic. You know, they have those implications in the show itself. Uh, and so I, I honestly, I do think that there is this sort of, Com this duality in it but i don't think it's anything in like i think it's almost subconscious on the creator's part simply because that kind of duality naturally exists in our narrative and mythological story structures uh, anyway mathematical you know everybody always now brings up daybreaker Everybody's forgot that the that Twilight Sparkle was the original Daybreaker. 
Remember back in like season one when everybody mean that Twilight was evolving into Rapidash and she got the fire main? That it, it was, was more of an expression of anger, not really a transformation. And on the other hand, a lot of people are also forgetting that Daybreaker was not uh, an, a, what do you call it? A, an imagery of what Celestia would see herself if she turned bad. That was star like Glimmer's version of what she thought Celestia would look like if she turned bad. A vision. Uh, yeah, it was her interpretation, again... basically. We don't know what Celestia will look like if she were to go bad. We only know based off Starlight's interpretation. Uh, then again, we have, well, I don't know if the Lunar Nights comics, um, there's Daybreaker, and also she says, I will never turn into you, meaning that she could well, turn into her, her, but she won't, and... I I'm sorry, but if it's not in the show, I don't acknowledge it. You're okay. talking about the Nightmare Nights comic. So now yeah. we've we, we've gone I'm... completely off train. I'm gonna steer us back a little bit. I have one final question before we get onto a tangent of of Daybreaker and and Nightmare Moon that w might actually happen eventually anyway. Um, if a Kieran foal was born after their parents went into the stream, would the foal be born? mute or with the sound or with the stream of silence curse and how would you take care of a child that can't cry uh honestly based upon the behavior of the kirins when they basically were about to force applejack and fluttershy to uh convert um because let's be honest here that uh that stream was a baptism it was a forced baptism. And so I absolutely believe that the Kirins, the magic only expresses to the like the people who go into the stream. So the baby probably would be able to talk, but I imagine the first thing any of them would do is literally baptize the baby in the stream to make sure it can't. Like just how quickly and how fast they were willing to basically throw strangers in against their will. Like... There is a dark aspect to this stream that they're not talking about. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could even go into like almost cult mentalities with it or like uh, some cult or religious subtext to the way they kind of behave, especially with the term vow of silence. Like they're like, this is a very dark question, I think, when you actually think about it. It is kind of dark because of, well... <laughs> Um, it's it's interesting because they they were born with the boys, but we don't really know the exact effects of uh, what the river could do, like if it could go on into the next generations, um, or or even if uh, if if the next generations could like be muted or well all of their life, and I, I see what Brony Critic is saying because yeah, the the minute they like grab them and throw them in because they were like discussing. Uh, and they were like, "Oh, wait, wait, wait! We, we we're just having a, a nice talk." And then they just like get them on straight right into the river, uh, which is like one of us, one of us. But um, it's it, it would be interesting to see, like, <laughs> going to the other question of if a Kirin could go to school. It, what if this Kirin was actually like mute, like at all? Like if he like if he was born after the, um, their parents, his parents were like uh into the stream of silence and well he's silence all, all, all of his life or something like that it's almost literally baptism by fire in that you know you, when you think about it it's like yeah you're right this is a very it's a very dark question like you're getting into like cult territory where it's like oh you have a new foal that's born it's uh, it's it's talking it's crying we have, we have to take care of that right now you know we we, we took a vow of silence you you as the parent took the vow of silence, and so does that apply to your kin. So, you know, your 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 child is going to go into the vow of silence. So, yeah, uh, you can. There, there's a lot to really go into. A lot more. I mean, we, we don't have time for it today, but you know, you could really play with that in cultism and baptism by fire. It's 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 really deep. It's all about the greater good. The greater good. The greater I mean, good. You watched. You watch the episode back, 
those stones in the river do have strange runes etched into them that were glowing. But in terms of the actual question, what about the cure? Like, even if it's born, let's reverse this back on the questionnaire. Even if they were born silent, couldn't they just take the cure and be unmuted? That is an unknown. Um, so, all of this said, does anybody have any final words on the episode they want to express before we start doing uh, our, our little outro thing? We've been going for almost an hour and a half. Not too much, but during Brony Critic's downtime, I did scribble up him being silenced in MS Paint. <laughs> Okay, I want to see. I want to see. Yeah, that's that's what's next. Is uh, b besides that art you just drew, do you actually have any other art for us? This. <coughs> no, because right, I'm well, working right. on the Christmas one. But there, there's the doodle <laughs> when we thought he was he was lost to us. <laughs> that is. That is both horrifying and, and hilarious at the same time. <laughs> it's like you, you got stung by a bunch of bees and you're allergic to them. Alright, so with that much said, um, if anybody has any final words, yes, no, maybe? I think we pretty much wrapped up everything, but go ahead. <laughs> Alright, well, Bernie Curtis, if you want to start outroing us out. Well, I am the Brony Critic. You guys can check me out on my YouTube channel. Uh, just type up the Brony Critic and you'll find me. I do uh, fandom reviews, fan fictions. I also do panels. Uh, I'm currently working on some panel on finally getting to editing down some panels from TrotCon. I had a problem with my computer that delayed all of them, but I should hopefully get them finished by the end of the year. Um, I just recently released a. Uh, I re recently released a new uh, review in November, so I definitely want you guys to check out that if you can. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Brony Critic. I kind of I do fairly regular uh, I do fairly regular tweets, just kind of about what's going on or if something cool is happening or if I'm watching something. So be sure to check out and say hi. Stop by and say hi, or even recommend stuff to me. I'm I'm always interested to see what's out there. Well, I've been Chojo, and that's the end of today's show, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed this discussion on Sound of Silence. You can find me, like I said before, on YouTube, Facebook, a lot on Twitter. Come follow me on Twitter. I usually post about videos and other projects that I'm working on. So if you want to know firsthand what I'm up to, follow me on Twitter. And I recently, not well in some regards, recently released a video re re reviewing Nightmare Nights. And... I hope you do enjoy that because that's the last review before my change into my new design for my OC. Small spoiler alert there. That video should be coming in the next few weeks or so. So, yeah, pumped to see the new design. I think the artist did a really good job on it. To you, Burb. Okay, uh, I'm Moon Knight. Uh, I, <laughs> I came in a little bit late. I'm sorry for that, but... Uh... I'm glad we I could uh, partake in, in the uh, discussion. Uh, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, I also uh, I am also a, a bit active on Twitter, the, checking out some of the stuff of the games, and also how to see and just react Bethesda. But uh, in other things, uh, I'm going to uh, release some uh, Christmas songs. Uh, I, I released only one the last week, but it was. Uh, this week was uh, sort of finals week and also next week, but uh, I'll be sure to upload some some Christmas stuff. So yeah, up to uh, Master Code. Thank you everyone for joining us in our lovely, lovely podcast. This is your ace analyst, Master Code. Thank you all. Once again, you can find me on YouTube, on the Twitters, and just in fact today... I released uh, me and Finn's collab on friend on the road to friendship. You should watch it now. You should watch it now. Golan, you should watch it now. Bliss, you should watch it now. Moon Knight, you should watch it now. Everyone, you should watch it now because it's a part of us all. Part of us all. Anyway, thank you all for joining us. And until next time, MC out. Uh... <laughs>
I think you just broke So this me. is Lightning Bliss, as Drinking Buddy in the chat has described her, the cute one. Hey, I'm Lightning Bliss! <laughs> no, I'm Lightning Bliss! You're Lightning I'm Bliss! I'm Lightning Bliss! God, we're really gonna have this argument. Okay, you can see her, you can see her channel in the chat now. Hi, Insane Spyro. Can you save me, please? <laughs> sure. So I am Insane Spyro, the greatest dragon in gaming. Where yesterday I put up a review of basically the rest of 2018, which was just the average stuff that it's okay. This included Mega Man 11. Deltarune, Black Ops 4, Battlefield 5, uh, and some others. And then I've just got three other big reviews to do for the end of the year, which is Fallout 76, Smash Brothers Ultimate, and Let's Go before the top five and bottom five of 2018. So uh, check them out. And I would definitely come back next week as well, because, you know, we've been to the highest heavens today. And next week, we're going to the deepest hells as being a dragon. Oh, it's, it's going to get tasty. <laughs> Go on, Golden. Uh, my bad. Um, you can check out my content on my main channel. I have a second channel and a Twitch channel. You can check them out there. Um, until next time, I hope you all have a good one. I, they actually can't hear me because I muted myself because I had to cough. I am a dummy. Uh, with Bethesda's permission and Hasbro's permission, uh, Fallout Equestria Dead Tree is being published. Uh, they've agreed to let me publish up to three books, um, so long as I pay all the publication fees. Um, that is a thing now, so I'm kind of plugging that everywhere I go because I feel horrible. I mean, it's just like Master Code. Go by, go by the book, please. Go by the book. Go by the book. Go by the book. The other, th the other thing is on my YouTube channel. Uh, I am posting these episodes uh, every Saturday morning, uh, about seven to nine o'clock in the morning. You should see the previous week's episode going up, so you can see what happened last week. You can go to my channel right now. It's actually up right now, um, and also, uh, I had a brain. Work there for a minute. Oh, uh, the story is available on Fem Fiction, and once Prop Master and I have been done re-editing the first twenty chapters, I will update all twenty chapters on Fem Fiction. Again, uh, the the pu pu purchasing of the book is to support the writing of it and to support the work I do, not to put a paywall between you guys and something else, or just in case you like a really having a really nice thick book that you can apparently beat people with because. Prop Master's estimated it's going to be like 400 pages. <coughs> Extra thick. I told you to book him, but this is ridiculous. Oh, it's hardback, oh, okay. too. Oh, good. I can oh, use it's... it to beat the writer of next week's episode. <laughs> oh, boy. Bye. Or beat the Howard. Love you all. Bye. Bye. Don't forget to write. Bye. All are awesome. Bye, Missy. Yeah. And I'm the real lightning blob with the real lightning blob. Please stand up. Please stand up. I'm a unicorn. I'm lightning blob. I'm Spartacus. <laughs> what have I started? <laughs> I'm 